Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here. We are at Baxter Cycle in Marnie, Iowa today and look what we got behind us. This is the brand new Royal Enfield Hunter 350. This is the Royal Enfield Meteor 350. And this is my new motorcycle, the Classic 350, Royal Enfield Classic 350. Desert Stealth, um, Supernova Blue, and let's see what color this one is. Rebel Black, isn't that a Rebel? It is a very sharp looking, it's a very gloss black, very shiny. You just, the yellow really pops on it, the silver on the front. Anyway, uh, I've been getting a lot of questions. You know, what's the difference between these three motorcycles? And uh, so I think we'll kind of go over the, uh, what they are at first, and then uh, what the differences are, the subtle differences between them. They are very different. Uh, they're similar, but they're different. They're very, they're, uh, we'll go through that. So the engine in all of them is a 349cc, single cylinder, single overhead cam, two valve, with a five-speed transmission. It's a liquid, I'm sorry, it's uh, air and oil cooled, fuel injected, of course. All of these have the same thing. They look like, a, you know, they look like they're exactly the same in design and style and everything. And, uh, you know, we talked about the uh, transmission, of course, and I'm gonna, y'all know me, I gotta tell you this. Five-speed transmission and Royal Enfield, I'm gonna say it again, right? Makes the best five speeds. It's just a great transmission. Look at it. it's got a heel shifter on this one. And here's the uh, Hunter with its rear set pegs. Look at the pegs in relation to the back of the engine. Farther back on this one. Here we have, they call that a forward control. And then on this, my bike, it's more of a mid control. And by the way, this bike has the, uh, we put the uh, wide pegs on it and I just love those so far. The power output is very similar. I think this one has an edge on power. Um, and we'll get into why that is here in a minute. But uh, the engines are very smooth. They got loads of torque way down low. The engines are about 20 horsepower and about 20 foot pounds of torque. And they're uh, about 27 Newton, that's about 27 Newton meters. Uh, the reason I think this one has a slight advantage in uh, power feel is this motorcycle is about 30 pounds lighter than for say that one, 31 pounds lighter actually. And uh, it has a smaller back tire, 17 inch versus, I think this one has, has an 18 on the rear. And that little bit of a difference does give it a little more torque, you know. Also this one has uh, the 17 inches front and back which makes it feel much more nimble. Uh, ride characteristics on each one of these is different. Let's start with this one. I think the best overall comfortable, easygoing ride of all three of these, and mind you, these, these differences are very subtle. So I think if you're gonna buy one of these, buy one based on how you feel about the bike how they look and then take one, take them each for a ride. But I think this one has the best, it's got a very comfortable seat. It's got a good relation of uh, a bar height to a passenger. It's got the nice forward controls. It's a very cruiser style motorcycle, very comfortable, easy going. Just uh, if I had to ride 300 miles this afternoon on one of these bikes, it would probably be that one. And after that, I'd take this one. But it's just a very comfortable thing. And then when you put a windshield on it, I rode one with a windshield here a while back and I, I just, you know, keeps the, keeps the pressure off your, uh, upper body. So let's go into the details about that. This bike has got the, uh, the longest wheelbase of all of them. It's got the 55.1 inch wheelbase. That's 1400 millimeters. And that probably helps with the ride. Um, it's got 6.7 inches of ground clearance. I think this one has that also. This one has less. That's about 170 millimeters. This one also has, I think the lowest seat height, which is 30.1 inches. That's uh, 700 and 65 millimeters and this one's definitely I mean, this is probably the tallest one here but uh, you know look at that saddle nice broad saddle good bend in it very nice I, I love the way it looks you know and look at this it's kind of a brown it's got the contour stitching it's got the silver you know infield just knocks it out of the park with these things I think let me look at cast aluminum this is a metal plate with a it's kind of a machined you know very sharp, very sharp. And then of course, looking at this. Isn't that just gorgeous? That little tank plate, metal tank plate. Uh, weight on this one. This one is supposed to be 421 pounds. That's about, uh, I think that's about nine pounds lighter than the Classic. And about 20 pounds, 21 pounds heavier than the uh, Hunter. And it has a four gallon tank, which is great. These are supposed to get in the 80s for mileage. I haven't been able to verify that yet. Although I was riding with a friend of mine yesterday, he claimed he got just over 80 on his. You know, that's quite a range if that's accurate. That's over 300 miles. Um, of course, all these have the same brakes. 300, 300 millimeter disc on the front with a double 
you know, Bybury double pod caliper, and I think they're 270s on the rear with a single pod Bybury. All of them have ABS brakes. Tires on the Meteor are a 19 on the front, 190-19, with a 17 on the back. That's interesting. 140, 70, 17 on the back. That's actually the same back tire as this one. You know, the best overall, as far as that goes. Uh, comfort, comfortable ride, easy going, you know, good good in the city, good in the, I guess just the best overall ride. Very slight differences, like I said, between these two, between these three. This is by far the sportiest of them all. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And uh, let's start with the tires. It's got 17 inch tires front and back. So it's got a lighter tire on the front, a shorter tire on the front, lower, lower mass, you know, much more uh, nimble feeling. This bike also has a much shorter wheelbase. It's got a 53.9 inch wheelbase. I think that's about two inches short of that inch and a half, something like that shorter than that one. That's 1,370 millimeters. Uh, the other thing this has, and this is a good point, place to put it up, this has the lowest amount of ground clearance of virtually any of the uh, infields, I think. And the uh, ground clearance on this bike is, let me see if I can find it here, 5.9 inches. So it's got the least amount. It's a lower, inch lower than those two. And something to notice is, on those two, the frames go under the engine. Here, the lowest point is the engine under the exhaust pipe, but the engine is actually lower. So this hunk of metal is lower in the frames, closer to the ground, giving this a much lower center of gravity. You would think that an inch or so wouldn't be that much difference, but ride the bike. It really, it really feels, this is a lot more sport bike, I would say, than any of these. Uh, this, this is far more nimble. Far more. It's a lot of fun to ride. It really is. They're all a lot of fun to ride. This one's by far the most nimble feeling, most uh, handling oriented. Now, having said that, I put 100 miles on this yesterday, and uh, one of the things I came away with is two, two things, actually. One is how stable it was, and the other thing I came away with was uh, when I got back to A-Town where I live, I have a little kind of city track that I follow, you know, all the, you know where all the potholes are and all the bumps in the road, and I whipped through that just like butter. I mean, it just did it so well. So much other things about this bike, 399 pounds, 31.1 inch seat, so it's a taller seat than that by an inch. That's uh, 790 millimeters. It has a 3.4 gallon gas tank, so 13 liters. It's a very good looking gas tank. You know, I pointed this out the other day, and one thing I wanted, I talked about these, but I didn't talk about was this little detail here. I don't know if you all can see that. It's a little crest here. That really adds a lot to this, you know? So here we've got the silver in the front, this beautiful jet black on the back. We've got this gold line, or I'm sorry, yellow line. This styling right here. You know, EN on this side. RO on that side, Royal Enfield. Just gorgeous. And the other thing I noticed about this is when you start looking at this a lot, you start seeing how this flows together. I don't think I'm making that. I think I'm seeing that really clearly. It's just a really... Whoever penciled that out did a good job. And I guess if you look at it, it kind of does the same thing back here. I mean, look at this line. Just beautiful. The rake angle on this is much steeper than on these two. I think this has a 20, let me see if I wrote it down, 25 degree rake angle, where the other ones are about 26. Now you wouldn't think that'd make that much difference, but it really, it, that's another reason. So the lower engine, the smaller tires, the steeper rake angle, it, the lower weight, it just makes for a much, much more sporty bike. Uh, so let's jump over here to the classic. This is my own classic. I just picked this up yesterday, bought it the day before. Uh, absolutely love it so far. I put a little over 100 miles, 100 miles yesterday and another 30 or 40 today already. This has a 54.7 inch wheelbase, so that's a little longer, a little shorter than the blue one, a little longer than the, the mm -hmm. Hunter. That's 1,370, 1,389 millimeters. The same amount of ground clearance, 6.7 inches, 170 millimeters, 31.7 inch seat heights. So it's the tallest seat of these three. This is the shortest, tallest, middle of the road. I don't have a problem with that. For one thing, it's an incredibly narrow bike and the, the center of gravity is so low that uh, it, it just doesn't seem to be an issue at all. Other differences, 430 pounds. Yeah, you know, it, it is heavier and I, I can feel it. When I ride these, I definitely know that's the lightest one and I definitely know that one's the heaviest one. Is it that big of a deal? That's a very slight difference. Uh, tires on this one, I've got a 19 on the front versus a 17 on the front on that one. I think this one had a 19 on the front also. So 19 on the front. We've got cast wheels on this one. We'll talk about that later. Uh, other details to look at. I think I've covered, oh, 3.4 gallon gas tank, which is 13 liters again. The big reason, I, why, why did I go for this one over that one, over that one? When this came out, I thought it was the most beautiful bike in the world, and it is. I love cruisers. 
And I think in the lineup, that's the most civilized of the three. And I think if you like that look, and it's a beautiful look, that's definitely the one to get. I've got friends that have these. Uh, Kara, the gal who works here, she put shorty shocks on it, lowered the front end, and she just loves it. And it's just a beautiful bike. This is very sporty, very fun, very nimble. It's not what I was looking for, really. But the real reason I bought this one over these two is honestly just the looks. I love the look. I love the look. It handles enough like this one. It handles enough like this one. But I just, I love the overall look of the bike. I love the cassette on the front. They're cassette, whatever these are called, this front end thing. It's That's a cast aluminum housing, the Tiger Eyes. I love the classic details from Royal Enfield that are all part of this motorcycle. I love the covered forks, the metal fenders, everything on this is metal, by the way. You know, I just, I just love, love, love the way this thing looks. Which one's better? I, there, like I said, there really is no better. It's, it's whatever, if I had all three of these, I'd, I'd drive a different one in each shade depending on how I felt. You know, it's really that that close, but uh, anyway, that's I got that one for the look. I love the way it looked, and uh, there's also something, and I don't know, I haven't driven this enough to say it, or this one enough. Maybe I'll need to get 100 miles on one of those. But there's a, a kind of a I mentioned this before, kind of a Zen feeling, and I was noticing this yesterday when we were out riding. You get into this mode between 50 and 60 miles an hour, the bike just becomes ultra comfortable, and you feel ultra right, and the, you know it's a very low kind of a quiver that runs through you kind of a I called it a massage of the body it's actually a massage of the soul you know it just does it right and I'm a, I'm assuming there's something to that it's the same engine as these I'm, I'm not going to go into the little minute details I guess other than to say styling differences would be the front end on this one you know the classic back end all the metal on this one it's that nice big tank four gallon tank the low swept seat you know the chrome and the I, by the way, I love this. I want to get one of those for that. I'm really thinking about it serious. I haven't decided yet. And then on this one, it's just pure sport bike. Look, I think this is the, I called it the uh, Hunter Scepter or the Enter Hunter or something like that the other day in a video. Some of y'all commented on that. Um, I just love the, I, I love the way they all look. This is the by far the most sporty looking of all three. And probably if you want to ride aggressively, that's probably the one to get. You know, I just, I love this. I love the detail. I love the, infield has just knocked it out of the park. Well, they, they seem to do that with every single bike, but you know, look at this. Blue, silver, black. You know, same here, blue, silver, black. The brown seat, the counter counter uh, color stitching. These are mall style grips. Oh, they all have that. Um, there's a USB port down here. I need to mention that because apparently I'm not mentioning that enough. And a lot of people are commenting about that. Right there. I think the Classic has it too. Yep, right there. If you all are interested in something like this, get yourself down to BaxterCycle.com in Marnie, Iowa. It's a 51 Interstate 80, Iowa. Um, go to their website, BaxterCycle.com. Check out what they got in inventory. And by the way, they got a lot more that's not in inventory, so give them a call if you don't see what you like. Uh, the other thing I want to mention about that real quick is they have... They have virtually every piece of apparel, Royal Infill apparel, that's on the on the main, on the, uh, main Royal Infill website. They got it here in stock, and uh, you know backpacks, shirts, pants, jackets, you name it. Um, then they also have, I can't believe they're in inventory of accessories that they have. You know, like I got these extra wide foot pegs and the seat, and the, this is all in stock. I mean, they order today, it'll ship out tomorrow. So, and they've got that all for all the uh, Royal Enfield models. Give those guys a try. Anyway, hey, it's a beautiful day here. I'm going to go ride. If it's nice where you're at, do the same. Wahoo!